from JH Coaching. Um, when I was a relatively new runner, I was a little bit self-conscious about the kind of running stuff that I wore, and I definitely didn't wear shorts. You can imagine then uh, my embarrassment when the first time I wore shorts, I got some really bad chafing between my legs. It was really sore. Uh, I couldn't walk. Uh, so very embarrassing it was and it also put me off wearing shorts for a long time because I was afraid that it would happen again. I did think that it would probably be worth talking a little bit about this. It can happen on relatively short runs like the run I was on the first time I wore shorts but on longer events it can also be an issue just because you're out there for such a long time and you're sweating and generally um, things can get irritated. Uh, personally as well, just as I've got a little bit older, my skin's become a little bit more sensitive. Um, so if there's a chance for me to get sore somewhere, I probably will. First things first, let's talk about clothing. In my experience, the more you pay for clothing, the better it is in terms of comfort. And this is certainly true when it comes to chafing. Um, if we think about those shorts, which I don't have now, this was way back in 2003, um, what might have been wrong with those is they were relatively cheap shorts. They weren't great for a number of reasons. The main reason, I think, is because of the seam. So these aren't shorts, they're actually tights, but they're also relatively cheap. And what we can see, if I show you these um, up close, is the seam on these sticks out and when it sticks out like that there's obviously a chance for something to rub against your skin and make things really really sore so if you're really wanting to avoid chafing um, a good start would be to invest in one or two really good quality pieces of clothing to run in so what to wear here's another pair of tights um, they're pretty old actually really old almost as old as those shorts which I've now not got um, but these I invested a little bit more money in these these are Ron Hill um, and if you can see the difference in the seam here on the inside it's really nice and flat against the material so nothing's gonna stick out and start rubbing if there is a bit of movement there it's as smooth as it could possibly be um, so for tights that's always a good thing to look for when you're buying tights and I'm not saying you've got to spend mega 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 bucks you might find something like this in a bargain bucket but it's just looking for good quality stuff that you know isn't going to um, irritate you in any way um, similarly with sh shorts, these shorts, this is a score actually um, and it is the most comfortable piece of clothing that I possess for running in. Um, they've got this short inside, that's the nature of a skirt. Uh, it's great. Uh, anyway, I'm not, I'm not here to sell you the skirt, but to show you the seaming inside. There is a bit of a seam here, but that's in a fairly safe area, quite high up, because this fits quite high up in the waist. But if you look at the actual shorts, again, nice, light, thin material. It's wicking material as well, so it wicks the sweat away. And again, the seam is nice and close and um, nicely tethered off. Uh, sewn well so nothing's um, going to really rub and irritate you there. I don't possess any but you can actually get things that are seamless as well which would be even better if you're somebody who really really is prone to irritation of that kind or you're just doing a mega mega event. Um, initially uh, when I did come back to wearing shorts I chose cycling shorts mainly because I thought well if they're not baggy there's nothing that can flap against my skin and really and I'm minimizing the rubbing because it's not it's not going to move as much and they work fine I've got lots of pairs of cycling shorts like this that's legs another place that I have certainly experienced problems is under my arms and um, that can get quite sore on the run, but then if you're wanting to run again the next day when it's got sore, it's, it's really painful then. There are a couple of things you can do about that which I'll come on to, but again, clothing is the key. This is one of those t-shirts that I got at a race. These seams are irritating and this is particularly where they irritate because right under the arm, right where your skin is soft, they've got this big bulky seam here. I've seen them worse than that actually as well. Um, but that is gonna rub over a long period of time and cause some irritation. So what we're looking for is not this, but something a little bit more uh, like this. Nice finished seam, no bumps, no lumps. 
Another thing to bear in mind is if you're anything like me, you like to keep on top of armpit hair. That is fine, um, and it's certainly a look that I prefer. Um, obviously, without armpit hair, you're not as protected with sweat because the hair would get rid of the sweat. And also, if you've if you don't keep absolutely on top of it and there's a little bit of bristle there, that's going to irritate after a while. So I usually make sure that um, I keep on top of the armpit hair and keep it really nice and close so that I'm not risking any irritation from some, some bristling in there. Obviously if, if you wax or something like that it's probably not going to be a problem for you. Uh, but if you're someone who shaves under there that's going to be a problem. Another thing to think about in terms of comfort and chafing uh, for women is the type of bra that you wear. If you invest in anything uh, in running, it would be a good quality running bra, especially if you're someone who has a decent cup size um, because you need that support. Uh, this is a Marks and Spencer's sports bra, which I can highly recommend. It's a back fastener, it fastens like a normal bra, which is brilliant, it's so much easier to get on and off. Uh, and handy if you're going to physio because you can just unclip for them to have a good look at your back. Um, but you can see the seams are all nicely finished off, there is quite a lot of nice support there and it's cool and it's got this wicking away material all around here so you're not going to get the chafing underneath your breasts here either. It's going to hold everything in place nicely. So I mean, for me, I'm not the best person to recommend bras, as you can see, but for me, certainly, um, the Matt Spencer bras do really well. Um, another thing that I've used, and I can get away with these cami tops um, because I don't need that much support, but this is ancient, I've had this years, but the nice thing about that is it's a double layer, so this layer is really tight, even on me, it keeps everything in place and nothing moves, there's no rubbing, and then this just falls nicely over the top, so any rubbing that's going on is going on against the fabric, not against you. For guys it is a little bit more difficult because obviously your t-shirt is going to be right against your nipples and that does cause nipple rash and um, I've seen I've seen that, I've witnessed that and it, it does look horrendously painful. Um, a couple of things that you can do with any areas, not just your nipples, which um, can have a tendency to be sensitive or to chafe, is to emolliate, get, some, get something on there that's going to reduce the friction. Good old Vaseline, that can work a treat in any areas like that. And I've certainly done that under my arms sometimes. I've just thought, mm, I'm a bit breastly. I've always got a little bit of this in my kit bag somewhere. I'll just put some of that under and, and make sure I don't I don't get any any chafing in there. Um, I do know people who've also just put um, plaster over the men who just put plaster over the nipples. The only thing I would say about that is you risk in a long event, you know, if it comes loose, then that's going to be with it. Uh, so just something that to bear in mind. Finally, the only other place where I've really experienced chafing has been where when I've been wearing a running rucksack. So you can see in the picture here, I actually had quite bad chafing on my collarbone. And if you look at the rucksack, the running vest that I'm wearing, it's over my t-shirt. So a good thing to do is to have a t-shirt that comes up above the rucksack that you wear, and obviously wear a rucksack that fits well. Um, that was the other problem, that was a bit big, so it was also moving around a bit as well. So get one that fits well when it's full, when it's half full, and when it's empty. So particularly with water, what I find is when it's full, it's fine because I've got two thin flasks of water here. Once I start drinking, the flasks are going down, and then it becomes a bit loose, and you know, I can't tighten it anymore. So just to test those things out before you buy, and then on the day of the race, just choose a t-shirt. Some of them actually have a little sort of collar here but something that you know is going to cover cover all of you and your you rucksack's just on that it's it's not on anything else so there you are some of the hints and tips to keep you a little bit more comfortable on those runs if you've got any other ideas or advice that you've heard of or used yourself do drop us a comment below i'd love to know and um, it's always good to to know how to maximize your comfort the main thing to take away is just um you know if you invest in good kit you're going to reduce things incredibly good well-fitting kit if you liked this video 
Um, give it a like, that'd be nice. It's nice to get some likes. Um, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, JH Coaching Run. And if you hit the subscribe bell, then you'll always know when the new videos come out and you'll never miss one. Thanks, bye.